Hello, I'm Greg Allen. I'm the Chief Executive of Future Care Capital. With me today, I've got Anne-Marie Naylor, our Director of Policy and Strategy. Um, and I really want to talk to Anne-Marie because Anne-Marie brings some uh, really solid knowledge and expertise around health and care data. Uh, and that's a topic that is very pertinent at this current time. Now, in terms of Future Care Capital, just a little uh, brief introduction to what we do. Our interest is in the future of health and care, and we see our role as bringing together policymakers and practitioners to raise the debate um, and help shape the conversation and shape health and care policy in the future. And we're all about informing, connecting and transforming. And I suppose there are five key pillars uh, around which we take our work forward. Um, and those are around the areas of data, technology, innovation and investment, and then how you scale all of those. So that's a brief introduction to us. But Anne-Marie, um, in terms of uh, an opening question, I guess, how are you finding the current challenging time during COVID-19? Um, I think from a personal perspective, I'm quite fortunate um, to be set up to work from home ordinarily, so it's not such a big change for me. And as I don't have small people running around my home office, uh, it's probably easier for me than it is for many other people. Um, but clearly there are still challenges around trying to keep in contact with family, friends, as well as colleagues at times like this. Um, so the video chat and uh, the new tech is kind of really helpful. Great. OK, well, I suppose if I think about uh, where you are now and how you came to work at FCC, taking a step back, um, what led you here? What motivated you uh, to come to Future Care Capital? So I've always worked in the public and third sector and um, for the last 12, 14 years I've, I've had the privilege of working largely for third sector organisations at a national level. Um, health and social care isn't an agenda that I've ever really looked at in depth before, um, but I was really attracted to the extent that the charity takes its focus around technology and the new and emergent environment that I think will transform health and social care policy and practice. Good, okay. And I suppose I'm particularly interested in your experience of um, data, health and care data in particular. And I mean, that's really quite a challenge for the government at the moment, isn't it, during the COVID-19 crisis? I think we're seeing a kind of mixed bag. So I think this is the first data driven pandemic in some senses. Um, so both from the point of view of scientific endeavour and sharing information across international boundaries to try to make advances at great speed uh, for what is obviously a, a, in a, a very challenging environment and a, a, the need to act quickly. Um, I think it's fair to say that there's a lot swifter developments we're seeing in the health sector and that we're now in recent weeks seeing the difficulties in integrating health and social care from a digital perspective, um, because social care data is obviously produced by largely in the United Kingdom context, independent providers of services to a broad ranging vulnerable groups and how we pull those two things together at speed to, to render it really effective is, is clearly of great importance. And if I if I unpick that a little bit, um, so what are some of that work actually entailed in terms of who we've been working with uh, and the kind of impact you think we're having? I think in particular we've been um, trying to help social care providers at the front line to understand what's happening as quickly as possible, some of whom are much more digitally mature than others um, and not used to using systems uh, that are necessarily interoperable with one another so that they can understand where to get supplies of PPE from, for example, but also to understand what is happening in, in terms of their residents in the case of care homes, but also in terms of frontline staff, in, in terms of what is the incidence of COVID amongst them? What does that mean for sickness and absence rates? How does that affect the care being provided to our beneficiaries at the front line? How can that be mitigated? Um, and trying to pull all those rather complicated kind of sets of data together um, but also acknowledging that the government doesn't really have an infrastructure for social care data in the way that it very rapidly has developed one for health data. Um, so these two things are also almost operating at twin speeds. So it sounds as if uh, you feel that we are well positioned to help the system, if you like, across health and social care and um, fill those data gaps, perhaps. And, and if I'm right in saying that, you know, how do you think we can help 
um, building on what you've said to, to fill those gaps? I think we're in an awful sense rather fortunate from the last two years in that we decided there was a, a significant gap in the social care data landscape early and have undertaken two in-depth studies uh, to understand what those gaps look like and what the implications of that missing information are so we understand better than most I suspect uh, notwithstanding those on the front line themselves where they what the implications of those gaps are in practice so when people are quickly trying to demand for example, mortality data at the same speed from social care providers as for health providers, we're quite clear about why that might be challenging. And then having to kind of think laterally about what, what innovative solutions could be put in place to improve that situation quickly. OK, so it sounds as if COVID-19 has really accentuated this as an issue and an opportunity for organisations like us, like ours, to, to help the system. Well, absolutely, albeit from awful circumstances, I think yeah. I personally feel very privileged that the organisation is in a, a position to offer and re, well extend the hand of support at this time to people that need it, but sure. also to question, continue to question things around health data that we've been looking at for some time, particularly in relation to national government endeavours to try and do very innovative things at speed, ranging from the development of symptom trackers online, the contact mm -hmm. tracing apps, and potentially immunity certificates and trying to think through all the ethical issues but also think about the commercial and innovation implications of those um, kind of endeavours that are necessarily being um, adopted and adapted at speed. So I think just listening to that you know there are there are great examples or some very clear examples aren't there uh, across health in particular of how changes have had to be made rapidly like GP online consultations, for example, where they haven't happened um, to such an extent in the past. Um, and it sounds like COVID-19 will really have an impact as well in terms of what you're describing around the data agenda um, and, uh, you know, the understanding of the implications, ethical and other, but also uh, the need for uh, data and the use of data to be put um, to best effect. I think I think it, there's always opportunity in a crisis, however dreadful. And typically, we would find medicine and medical advances during a, a, an all-out war situation. And while this might be an invisible en enemy uh, rather than one we can see, clearly it is galvanising people to act uh, very quickly and to, to adopt new ways of working. I think primary care is uh, absolutely phenomenal. The pace at which uh, GPs and others at the, at the front line have been picking up the use of remote consultations, for example. Um, but it's also happening amongst consultants in hospitals that are trying to minimise the kind of travel and exposure of immunocompromised people to, to uh, the virus itself in different settings. So, yeah, I think there is implications for data, but I also think there's implications for technology. And I think, you know, it's impossible to put a figure on it, but I would say that what might have been achieved in five years has probably going to be achieved in six months. Sure. And and I suppose building on that, to, to what extent do you think there's a, there's a gap between policymakers and practitioners on the ground in terms of uh, how we improve the delivery of health and care in the future? I'm thinking about that gap in particular. I think there are a number of gaps. I think the first gap is, is first and foremost with people in receipt of care on the front line, since so many are digitally excluded or lack digital skills to engage with the brave new world that is emerging, both not just in relation to health and care, but through the lockdown and beyond in relation to social distancing and the way that we work differently and the way that we maintain contact with people so that we don't end up socially isolated. So I'm first and foremost concerned that the, the, the brave new world doesn't exacerbate kind of existing digital inequalities. Uh, and, and perpetuate digital exclusion with then health implications uh, that flow from that or care implications. I think then we've got different front lines. So the gap between a front line uh, worker in social care providing domiciliary care is bound to be different from that of a digitally savvy, already innovative consultant in a particular health discipline working in a hospital leading a kind of research studies. So I think it, it's a nuanced picture. Um, but th there is there is also a gap in Whitehall and in local government in some parts of the country where they are more or less digitally mature, savvy, um, and trying to grapple with very complicated large system changes and systemic tools. Okay, um, I find that very interesting. I mean, I'm just thinking about uh, the way we engage with policymakers and practitioners. Um, and continue to, to do that. But I'm also thinking about our focus on communities and communities themselves and how they embrace the future of health and care, um, particularly in terms of how they 
uh, play a part in health and care innovation. If you if you sort of shift your 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 uh, focus there to communities, what's your view around the opportunities that that communities have in this context? So I think we're seeing. I mean, there are there are obviously different views as to how positive and enthusiastic we should be about the great new wave of civic mindedness and civic spirit and activity, but it's quite clear in some respects that some national initiatives to try to use technology to galvanise communities have been le rather less successful, it seems to me, than ones that have been very quickly organised by third sector organisations and local government with, in conjunction with communities who have spontaneously self-organised using new technology tools. So I think there's a sense that People have realised through because of the nature of the particular crisis that we are collectively responsible for stewarding our health and well-being. My health is your health in the context of this virus. And I think in a sense that potentially lays and paves the way towards health as a social movement, which is something that people have spoken about for a number of years. But I think now people can sort of say, how do we do this together so that we remain healthy together over a period of time? OK, and so I suppose uh reflecting on all of the things you and we've been involved in um, working with others out there uh, historically but particularly over the last few months are there any particular lessons that you feel we've learned that would be useful to to reflect back in terms of how we've been able to influence or more important support others uh, in this in this time of need I hope that the expertise we've developed over the last three years means that we've been able to be a critical friend to government and to policymakers. Um, and practitioners within the civil service who are trying to do difficult things under immense pressure. I think we've also been able to um, consider kind of more radical ways to undertake research in the context. We've had to reinvent our own methodology. And so hopefully now we're trying to think about how to use technology to better affect to undertake research about technology and data's impact in the context of health and care. Um, so I think that, in a sense, we are iterating as, as our other researchers working in the open, more collaborative fashion, using the technology tools that are at our disposal. Great. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Well, look, thanks ever so much for taking the time to uh, have this short conversation today. This is part of a series of conversations I'm having with leaders across the sector, across health and care and beyond. So thank you again. And I will continue with these conversations. Thanks. Thank you.